Good evening, everyone, and welcome along to another Tune Under podcast. Uh, been a bit thin on the ground of late, but given the uh, the World Cup drought of uh, Newcastle United matches, so back into the swing of things now, getting prepped for the uh, season to start back up again. So, uh, got a few few bits and pieces uh, to, to run through tonight. So let's let's get started. Um, joining me tonight is Keegan and Dimmy, uh, both down in uh, in Victoria, um, fresh from a, a bit of a debacle. Um, so we'll, we'll I want to touch on this really quickly anyway um uh, before we do um get into the whole melbourne derby game and the and the issues surrounding um australian a-league football at the moment um just a quick plug um obviously if you're watching this on youtube you like what we do yeah hit hit the likes um subscribe and the bell button um helps us out a load uh we do have a subscription option now as well so if anyone wants to chip in a little bit it's not a lot of money um but it helps us out pay the bills um which is really good we're uh, we're getting a few subs now and a few uh few members so that's actually really good to see and we've actually already launched it um with something being that uh, lee's been in the process of of designing and, and marketing a load of different uh, shirt designs and our model for the evening keegan has one of these shirts that is now on our online store we can get through the website um stand up keegan show us your social bruno show right. probably the best model but this is our uh <laughs> our bruno our bruno number uh, it's a nice print well designed by lee and yeah it's available in the store right now so i'm sure if you click on our um twitter or or uh, our website they'll have links to our store there so if you like what we do and you, you want to get something like that, even if you've got a few uh, design suggestions or something you might be interested in, if it's if it's like a Bruno top or someone else, it might be a, a Wilson or a, an ASM top or, or something like right. that. I the believe there is Miggy. a Miggy one there as well. Yeah, I'm not sure. But, yeah, if you've got anything you think might be a hot seller, we're all is. And I'm sure Lee will be happy to whip something up with his fantastic design skills. Indeed. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's all there for anyone that wants to kind of – you know the the shirts are nice because it gives us a little bit of cash to to keep the keep the lights on so to speak um keeps us keeps us on Streamyard and keeps us in all of the um the streaming duties that we want to do but yeah i mean it's uh it, at least i'd get you a, a little bit of a prize at the end as well um and i'm quite sure at some point during the season um uh, before the end of the season uh we'll, we'll probably do a nice little giveaway for some of our subs and members um for for one of those nice shiny shiny t-shirts so uh before we get into the whole newcastle united news though um obviously uh australian a-league football soccer as it is over here um has has been making making headlines around the world i believe um for pretty much all the wrong reasons uh on the back of what was supposed to be a load of goodwill um and a load of uh positive impetus behind like uh, you know behind the game in general. Uh, we've got our, obviously Garen Cole coming over to, to Newcastle, had a had a nice few little cameos in the World Cup. We've got Australia qualifying for like past the group stages. You know, everything's going positively and all of a sudden the, the powers that be decide to take a massive dump on any of that goodwill by turning around and making the stupid decision to permanently move all of the grand finals to sydney um no matter whether or not you're the home team or not so typically for those in the uk that don't understand this we've got this weird situation where we have a regular season um you don't necessarily win anything for winning the league in the normal season they then want to go on and do a final series because it has to be more like afl or nrl to you know get o o other people in um I, it's something i've never understood it's the same with the mls um the whole let's make it more like another sport so that will generate some some interest and and get more fans involved fans that want to watch football want to watch football they want to watch it as it is in every other country that plays the game um, if they want a nice cup final, then make a proper cup competition, 
but yeah, there's there's no promotion relegation. It, it's it's just a complete mess. Um, it's something we obviously living in Australia, we we kind of get involved in and, and a bit passionate about trying to see that local local game promoted more and, and develop more. Um, but then obviously a lot of the fans were, were significantly unhappy, shall we say, uh, and. Uh, Dimi, Dimi and Keegan were lucky enough to be at the Melbourne Derby game yesterday um, where the planned walkout after 20 minutes um, didn't so much materialize as a complete and utter farce that got the game uh, game cancelled. Number of reasons. I'm going to let Dimi and Keegan like sort of recount the details of this one. Um, Dimi, I'll let you start. You, you're passionate about this. Um, it was just an absolute shit show. Um, but yeah. Give us, give us a rundown of, of what led up to it and what actually happened. Yeah, so you, you, sum, you summarise it pretty well in terms of why the fans were were upset and angry. So basically, there was a plan to, to do a 20-minute walkout by both the North, the Northern End, North Terrace, the Victory fans and the Melbourne City fans at the other end. So there was a joint solidarity. There was going to be a walkout after 20 minutes. Then there was a a myriad of, of banners and anti-establishment, anti-APL chants, and which is all fine. It's all above board. We've we've got our right to say what we want to say, but everything sort of turned a little bit, oh, not a little bit, uh, very sour. Sort of <laughs> after the twenty minute, after the sorry, it's no laughing matter really. But after after the twenty minute mark, so there was uh, there was a lot of city fans who who threw flares on the pitch. Our being Melbourne Victory fans, me, me and Gigan, our keeper was smart enough to to not hurl those flares back into the supporters. But unfortunately, the the Melbourne City goalkeeper wasn't as smart. So with any flares that were on his eighteen yard box, in his eighteen yard box, he hurled back into the crowd. And as the second one that he hurled towards the fans landed, sort of first couple of rows in in the stadium, that sort of kicked off any sort any further anger that there was. Um, with the boys and there was a pitch invasion and Tommy Glover, the goalkeeper was attacked. He was, a bucket was thrown at his head and I think a few, a few guys tried to have a crack at him. I think the referee caught some, some sand in his face as well. I'm not sure he was hit, but, uh, but yeah, it was a bit of a shit show and, and definitely not the intention of the majority of the people who were, who were there last night from, from both supporter groups. It, it just sort of spiraled out of control and, it, there was there was no winners last night. I mean, the game was cancelled. City were up one 0 at the time after twenty one minutes, but uh, there was no winners. Football football lost. Fans of victory lost. Fans of City. It was just yeah, it was an absolute shit show. And I think the biggest thing is going to be the the ramifications. And, and we we spoke about this off air as well. Obviously, there's there's that mob mentality um, of you know it only takes a couple to kick off when everyone's either drunk or on on other sorts of gear. Um, doesn't take a lot to encourage that sort of uh, unruly behaviour. Um, I know that, uh, I know, Dimi, you you said that a lot of them potentially have already had bans um, and were still able to get into the ground. So that's obviously something that we we don't want to see. Um, if people are getting banned, they're getting banned for good reason. Um, I think one of the big things that we've tried to suggest with Australian football over the last sort of year of this podcast or so is the over policing of these games and you know sort of cracking down on fans and and having that sort of mentality where you know oh the the fans are clearly going to cause trouble so we're going to like stomp on them pretty heavily and it's taking a lot of like the enjoyment out of it a lot of the growth out of the game but then you know you, you get to the point where things like this happen and then all of a sudden it's like well you know like sort of rocky roads ahead i think the fans in general are probably going to suffer um, Keegan, what were, what were your thoughts about like the the, the incident, the the lead up? Um, what do you reckon is going to happen long term with the game now, um, or at least short term, until we figure out what's happening with the the long term details of other br potential breakaway leagues? I'm hearing and like sort of starting up other other competitions that people will support. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I think no. the league the league will be fine. Um, it's obviously going to take a, a fair bit to win back. The trust of of especially active support sort of all around the country and um just just general fans trying to get them like i think families will be a bit hesitant to go to games now after seeing this plastered all over the news like every 
news outlet, morning TV show and everything um, this morning. Had it all, like it was their lead story everywhere. So it's obviously going to be a pretty big turn off to take fans, which is really sad because of, like you said, all the goodwill that and all the good stuff that happened with the Socceroos seem to really bring everyone together. And yeah. it's got – it's either – that or I think basketball is probably the highest participated junior sport in the country. And, and there's been a big problem with translating that into further, be that through funding and, and development and pathways and all that sort of stuff. It's, it, it's a whole rabbit hole of reasons why, but look, it, it sort of starts at the top. And when you see things like this happen, um, it's, it's like horrific, not just for the people who were there and the families who were around the kids that were around at the time as well, but, just for the game in general, like it's a real kick in the guts after three weeks of great work and stuff like that. And like me and Dimmy were, I guess, fortunate in a way where we were right up the back of where everything happened. So we, we had no, yeah, we had no um, sort of involvement or not that we're like that, but we we're actually probably good that we could actually see everything happen. Cause we, we like, we were looking down on everything and yeah, it, like everyone seems to be pointing fingers like, yeah, oh, he shouldn't have thrown a flare in the crowd. Like that's going to ignite everyone. Yeah, of course it is. But at the same time, why are you throwing flares on the ground in the first Should place? Should have been like, there in the first place. Yeah. But like Dimmy yeah. said, like there was seriously like the whole, the whole night really, like there was nothing, no winners. I guess the only winner really was the victory keeper who threw his flares and just sort of let it go and yeah. didn't, do anything else but like apart from that like there was no winners on what's probably the biggest fixture in the a league on the a league season i reckon the christmas derby is probably always the biggest one and yeah for that for that to be the i guess the main headline where that it would had the absolute perfect opportunity to send a message about the incident and what happened like like i said the biggest game the biggest stage that could have made the most noise and unfortunately it turned into what it was and then the pylons just coming and coming. And to be honest, the pylons deserved. So, yeah, I think the league will be fine, but it's just going to take a, a fair bit of I think it's going time, to take a I think, yeah, definitely. to try and get it to a point where people feel safe to go to games and, yeah. like, the, the whole thing sort of gets back to where it can be. But, yeah. I, I know. I mean, we were joking in the – group chat that you two are going to end up in lockup for the night after running on the pitch. It was just, uh, yeah, didn't, yeah. didn't quite expect that <laughs> yeah. to actually come off. Yeah. We were only joking. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a little bit of a, oh, crap, yeah. okay. <laughs> Let's hope they actually stayed in their seats. Um, yeah. No, nah, that's good. So, yeah, it's look, it's it's not something that any of us really wanted to see. I mean, we all want the game to grow in this country um, as much as anyone. Uh, it seems the powers that be do, do anything they can to shoot themselves in the foot. Um, it's bad enough when the AFL decide that they want to release the fixtures for the new AFL season, the Aussie rules yeah. season. Um, like while the Socceroos are playing in the world cup, it was just yeah. like, I mean, 6 a.m. Yeah. seriously, it was 6 a.m. Yeah. in the morning on a Sunday morning. The, yeah, yeah. It was just yeah, so was petty. Um, but you know, you don't need, you don't need them doing that. If you're going to shoot yourself in the foot the way, uh, the way the league has um, with the PR that they've, they've done significant harm to themselves and then obviously with this incident it's it's not something we can own it's not something to see um but anyway enough of that uh let's move on to uh bigger and better things and that is newcastle united obviously uh world cup is still on the finals uh tomorrow morning i believe um tomorrow morning tomorrow, tonight tomorrow morning um, a. A. Still, still, 1 a.m brisbane time 2 a.m uh, melbourne time uh, so obviously Newcastle doesn't have any any players left in there now, um, unless we do manage to. Well, I was going to say we buy Diaby, but he's not even in the French squad. So, look, um, <laughs> quick touch on on the Newcastle players. Obviously, the big the big plus point is they're all coming back fit. No no new injuries. No major no major issues. Um, Callum Wilson had a little bit of a scare while he was over there, but apparently he seems to be okay. Um, and everyone else has everyone else has come through unscathed, so that's exactly what we wanted. 
A little bit disappointing that we didn't see more of the likes of Bruno. Um, didn't seem to get much of a much of a sniff of anything, uh, which was really weird because in the lead up to that, he seemed to be like one of the mainstay players. Um, I can only personally think that Tite was was taking the huff because he was asked about why Joe Linton wasn't in there, and he's right. Well, I'll show you. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it, it was just a really strange call. I mean, they were crying out for some some extra sort of drive in that midfield um, for the Brazil game that they went out on. And, you know, well, you know, he doesn't even get off the bench. A little bit of a weird call. Um, obviously, I didn't expect Pope to play. Um, you know, Gareth Southgate likes likes T-Rex arms and, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, but still, still maintain that he should have, a normal size goalkeeper would have got that shot <laughs> that he conceded um, <laughs> against France. But, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, none of the other players really got much of a sniff apart from Fabian Shah, who like shipped five goals <laughs> when he managed to get a, get a start for, <laughs> for Switzerland. Um, Keegan, you can start off. What's, what's been your overall sort of takeaway of the Newcastle players for the world cup? And, um, are, are you as disappointed as I am that like the likes of Bruno didn't see more pitch time? No, not really. I, I was sort of with Lee, like if he's not a, if he's not a mainstay, then don't bother. Like, I was sort of like, when Trippier started, I was like, that's great. Like, it's a great advertisement for us. He's starting for England. And then once he sort of got shifted to the bench for Luke Shaw, I'm like, good, don't play him anymore. Like, same as Bruno was the same. Like, if you're not going to start them, don't bother playing them for us personally. But then part of me, we spoke about this over a couple of Sherpas yesterday. I mean, Dimmy, I was sort of saying I was a little bit concerned that for six weeks they've not really played. Like they haven't really played a game and stuff like that. So hopefully most of them are available for the Bournemouth game and they can get they can have a good blow at against the Bournemouth side who we're not exactly sure what sort of team they're gonna send up. And we checked the fixtures out yesterday and like well, we've got it I think it's a six day break, wasn't it, Dimmy, between the yep. Leicester games. Yep. So there's no reason why they can't play a pretty much a full strength team against Bournemouth, blow the Colbebs out for their guys who haven't played much and be cherry ripe for that Leicester game as well. Yeah, no, that's, that's actually it. I mean, I, I totally get why Lee was was adamant he didn't want any of the Newcastle players going. <laughs> we don't have a deep squad, and we'll get onto that when we when we yeah. discuss the friendly from last night. Um, the, the, the big talking point, obviously, from the Socceroo point of view and from a Newcastle point of view, were the, the cameo appearances from Garen Cole. Um, just turned 18, came on, probably had a... Uh, had a reasonable chance to tie the game um, against Argentina. And, you know, uh, it, it's, it's one of those things that we've all said um, probably needed more more game time, more time on the pitch. He seemed to be the only one that caused problems. It's the same thing we've been saying for, for his A-League side. They yeah. don't seem to want to start him. And every time he comes on, he makes something happen. Um, yeah. well, why not? Why not give him more game time? But that's soon to be a thing of the past anyway, because he is joining Newcastle in January. Um, that's the done deal, and apparently he'll be off to Europe somewhere to get regular game time at a at a, at a reasonable level. I'm, I'm guessing. I think Portugal's being talked about, but yeah, Demi, what what were your thoughts over the the, the general World Cup um, and and you know the, the Newcastle players in particular? Garen Cole, how excited are you that you know he, he looks he, he's performing on the on the international stage, so it doesn't look like he's going to have too much of a problem in translating. His, his form for the A-League into, into kind of like bigger bigger team efforts. Yeah, well, Garansky he just, he just doesn't care. He's just got no fear, that that kid. I mean, the way it, although his shot was, I mean, you can nitpick it and say he should have gone higher, he should have blasted a bit more. And, and Martin has made an unbelievable save, but the composure and the turn that he did to, to floor the Argentinian defender for an 18 year old kid to do that in a, in a World Cup round of 16 match in the 95th minute, I mean, it just shows he's he's got no fear. And that's that sort of thing you can't teach. And we've spoken about, spoke about that a few times on the pod previously. He's he's a, a natural, naturally gifted footballer, but he's also got that confidence that you need, as doesn't matter what age you are, that you belong on the pitch and, and you can, you have the talent to show what you can do. And, I think even even though he didn't play much, he had a few cameos off, off the bench. That that experience of being around being around oh, soccer yeah. is playing against Argentina is, is going to be fantastic for him, and and hopefully he does find some regular game time, and and potentially in July he'll be back for preseason, and who knows 
if anything, so be in the in the first ham squad. But in terms of everybody else, I was a little bit disappointed to be honest. Bruno didn't get more of a more of a run. I was very keen to see how he would go in in Brazil's team. I mean, Brazil was loaded. They probably had two starting 11s that they could pick pick from. But I was very disappointed that uh, old mate Fred from uh, from Manchester United was getting uh, regular game time over him because I mean, I don't know what Tite or even Man United see from that bloke, but. If anyone in their right mind says that he's a better footballer than Bruno in the in the role that they play, they're they're killing themselves. So it's a win for us oh, that he didn't play and yeah. and didn't get injured. But but I think that Keegan's right. The lack of match fitness might be a bit of an issue for uh, for our boys. Yeah. So I mean, obviously we've we've you know if 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 Graham Cole, by all accounts, he's had a number of offers um like pretty much every club in europe seems to want him on loan uh, at the moment after his world cup performances so they're they're banging the door down uh eddie howe's office phone apparently is, is ringing off the hook but um hopefully as you say look he gets regular game time it's no good him going somewhere else and sitting on the bench he may as well be um sort of getting used to the team and, and if even if he's playing in the academy side or the the under 21s and he, and he just gets to train with the senior side that's going to be better than him going away overseas and, and just sitting on the bench so he, he's got it they've got to kind of try and get something where he's guaranteed some game time um i mean obviously if, if it's it's a tough one um I, I i'm glad that it's not my job because if you're sending a player on loan for me you want to make sure that they're getting game time um and it's tough because obviously the club's going to be looking out for their results and if a player's not playing well um or they're struggling to adapt or something then they're not going to play them but at the same time well they're young they need that experience so look we'll, we'll wait and see what happens um there's not a lot of else going on in terms of the rumor mill at the moment um i think uh harrison ashby at right back um as a um, apparently he's out of out of contract with West Ham. Um, it's someone we were apparently keen on in the summer. Now he he isn't signing a new contract for West Ham by all accounts. the The talk is that his agent is the same agent as Eddie Howe. So there's there's a lot of little shenanigans going on in the background. If you listen to some of the West Ham by a podcast and some of the West Ham fans out there. Uh, look, he, he, I've seen some highlights of him. He looks like he's got a decent shot on him. Crosses the ball well. And, you know, he's 21, and if he's happy to come here and learn off Kieran Trippier and eventually kind of take over from him, that just seems to be an absolutely perfect scenario for us. Um, gives gives Trips another another couple of seasons at, at sort of like as the starting right back, but, you know, with, with, with some good cover and hopefully as as he gets better, he, he sort of starts to push Trippier out, out a little bit more. Um, and obviously, as we uh, spoke about the other day, you know, we, we've potentially got European football on the horizon in the near future. So we're going to need to have those rotational players anyway. Um, so, yeah, I, I, that would be a huge one for us. Um, and I think, like, the, the talk is that we're supposedly after a number of other kind of very young, talented players that are probably going to come in and slot in behind one of the established senior stars uh, and effectively learn off them and come through over the next couple of seasons. Um, that seems to be the, the, the fit that we're going for. Um, have you heard anything else, Dimmy? Um, any other, any kind of rumours or, you know, obviously the, the Madison ones are not going to go away anytime soon until he, he either signs or he doesn't um, in January. Uh, that's going to that's gonna, that's gonna rumble on for some time, I think. Yeah, I think the I think you're right. the The Dan Ashworth model, model seems to be obscure young talents around the world who's, who have first time experience but have have room to grow. So there's a couple of boys in in South America. I think one in Argentina and one in Brazil who potentially we're we're looking at. So if they're going to be first team squad additions, I, I don't think they'd be starters. I, I'm fairly certain we're not going to be signing probably more than one, if any, first 11 caliber player, that, that could be a Madison. But any player we do sign, like you said, Mark, will be a, a backup, a rotation, someone to learn off the, the senior players. And I don't think it's a bad idea, to be honest. I think as squad, our first 11, our first 15, 16 players that we've been playing have been doing really well. But there's going to be injuries. There's going to be times we're going to need some energy off the bench. And if we've got these young 18, 19, 20-year-old talents coming through who obviously – got first of exposure already at, at their young age, plus they're better than what we've already got. 
underneath in terms of our academy, which is another conversation altogether. But it's not the worst idea, and and obviously they're gonna be, they're gonna be learning off off some quality pros. So I think they're the signings we're gonna be looking to make. And if Madison signs, that'll be I'll, I'll be completely floored if we actually get end up getting Madison. But if he signs, fantastic. He slots into the eleven. But other than that, I think we do need to get get a bit younger and, and get some some more young talent through the squad to to just boost that that entire depth more so than the the starting eleven. No, indeed. Um, so Keegan, if if you if you had to pick one like established name player that you wanted to sign in January um, to like compliment and realistically, um, would you be happy with someone with one player joining? Who would that be? And do you see this kind of Brighton on a budget type thing um, being like this really good model that will lead to long-term success? Or do you think it's going to need a little bit more input at the, at the higher end of the, of the player market? Yeah, I think um, the one player I'd sign is probably Diaby. I think that that left wing is going to be a bit of a problem for us. I mean, Miggy seems to have become the player that we hoped he might have been this year. So that sort of solves our right wing. I know at the start of the year that that seemed to be the position that everyone was clamouring to to sign a player in. But, I mean, that that left wing, I think, is a bit of a problem with us like, for all – what Jacob Murphy's been doing since ASM has been injured. I just don't think he's the sustainable long-term solution. And I mean, and if we can add some goals through that position as well, that just makes us a lot more effective. And I think Maxi's shown, especially last 12 months, his form and or his body's probably not as trustworthy as what it needs to be in an Eddie Howe 11, I guess. So yeah, yeah Diaby seems the obvious one. I think for me, like I don't think we really need, James Madison, not saying that I'd be upset if he signed with us, but I just don't think he's a player we really need at the moment. And I think during our – we're still in our infancy, I guess, with growing a squad and buying a squad. So I think we need to spend smartly, which we have done so far. So I think the RB is the sort of smart spend. But yeah, I agree with Dimmy. If we can sort of fatten up our squad a little bit with young – sort of talented kids maybe under the age of 23 especially with the condensed fixture on the sort of the back half of the year where rotations and and stuff like that are going to be important i mean if we can get over bournemouth and a couple of fa cup games or rounds as well i mean that's could be six or seven extra games on top of an already packed sort of season so i think squad depth and the ability to have quality to rotate through the through the team every now and then like not wholesale changes, but it might be a time where Trippier needs to like, not start a game. He might come on for the last half an hour or something like that, and we've got someone like a Harrison Ashby who can play that right-back role for 20 minutes. I think our centre-backs, we should be pretty much covered through Burn. So Burn, Botman and, and Shah, we can sort of rotate through and have target players a left-back as well. I think our, our centre midfielders are, are pretty good now with, with Shelby back playing as well. So it's just that sort of front front third quality wise, I think that we can sort of, if we can sort of fatten that up and add a little bit more young quality players who can chop out a game or two and while learning the whole sort of the next six months, I think that's going to be massive for us, not just for this year, but for the next year going forward, if we can get that youth down and then every transfer window, maybe buy a couple, one or two young players as well as an established one, it's going to be a really sustainable model going forward. I think that's the thing. It's like we've got, we've, it's, it's easy to get carried away like how far we've we've come in just such a short period of time um but you know yes squad depth is, is a thing but we need to be kind of we, we do need that extra little bit of quality on the bench at times um and i'm not taking anything away from the likes of murphy or or anyone like that who have come in and they've done a really good job for us and they yeah, will work absolutely. hard for the team but there's definitely that drop off in quality, like that finishing yeah. quality, the, that little end product, that little bit of jinky skill that's going to pull something out of nowhere. Um, and it, and it's kind of um, it's interesting that when you when you get onto social media, you get a lot of these talks where people are still in that Ashley mentality, and it's going to take a while for us to like 
come out of that of that sort of um, sort of shell shock routine of like, well, we, where where is this, where's this player going to play? Who who are they going to replace? It's like it's not about a first choice eleven now. We need squad depth. We need yeah. to build that squad depth. We need to be able to bring someone off the bench if we want to hit the heights of what the owners are saying they want to do. We need to have like equivalent quality to bring off the bench and to be able to rotate and cover for injuries and stuff like that, um, like all the other top teams do. So it's 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 one of those those weird men, like mindsets where we're so used to just kind of like, well, we've got a good first choice eleven, and assuming we can get enough games out of them before injury or too many games kick in, then you know we we should man- maintain our Premier League survival. Um, it, it's going to take a little while to 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 get our our heads switched around to the to the new way of thinking. Um, mm. But uh, look, I mean, to be honest, we've had two uh, two friendly games, um, one over in Saudi Arabia, a nice little summer uh, sort of summer break for them, I guess you would say. It was like a little sort of uh, fair weather training camp. Um, I, I watched some of the some of the the movies of of the players training and that all look to be pretty happy um isak's back in training uh not going to be risked i don't think until potentially the leicester game um by all accounts so that's that's something to watch but you know look we we, we won the the game over in saudi against al, al hilal i think it was al hilal or something um look five five nil can't take anything away from that i thought joe linton was potentially a little bit lucky with with both of his goals. Um, I don't think they were sort of clear cut, <laughs> crystal clear finishes. It was more the more the Joe we we we've come to love and uh, love and respect for his work rate. But He's um, our, yeah. our Joe, our Joe, yeah. But uh, yeah. He, he was lucky. But he'll, we'll take them all day. Miggy's kind of carried on two goals for him, and then uh, Young Stevenson um, from the academy came on. He scored the fifth one, so that's that's good to see some of the some of the young kids. And I, I want to sort of say, like, we we just touched on um, the you know the the fact that we're wanting to like bolster the squad with some younger talent brought in from overseas, and there's a couple of nice South American guys that we're looking at. Um, Keegan, how good is it to see the likes of like Steven? And, and you know this Lewis Miley, sixteen-year-old, um, being taken yeah. over for that summer training camp, that that fine weather training camp with the with the senior squad, and being able to train with them and get that experience. Um, how, I mean, how good is that? Yeah, yeah, it's great, and I think it's important as well for it's a, it's a good sell for the young kids that we're going to try and and nick from other young like academies and stuff like that until we sort of get ours and our scouting arrangement to the point where we can we can find these kids and get them in before we have to go and pinch them off everyone else's but if if it's a clear pathway they can see where if you're good enough you're going to get a chance to train with the first team and then you know who knows what can happen so yeah not just good for the kids as well and by reports um they're both great kids i was listening to eddie howe after the game and he was pretty pretty impressed not just with them as players but as people as well which is as we know, really, really important to yeah. to how the club operates at the moment. So, yeah, I think it's great for them, like personally, and, and great holistically as well, where people can sort of see, yeah, if I'm good enough, I'm going to get a chance to train with these first team players. And like um, uh, Lewis got on yesterday as a 16 year old in front of well, 35,000. 35, <laughs> so, like, it's a pretty. Yeah. I know it's only a friendly, but it's still like you'd be absolutely buzzing if you're a 16 year old and all your mates and, and stuff are there and you actually come on and play a senior friendly, like that's going to give him a massive boost to now he's had that little lick of the ice cream. He's going to, he's going to try and want yeah. the whole thing now. So yeah, I think it's a great thing. I, I think you've summed it up though as well. Uh, we've, we've had a bit like an, an, an abysmal, let's not, let's not beat about the bush here. We've had an abysmal record with bringing through youngsters from the Academy over the last, however many years, there hasn't been that clear path through, um, nothing sort of screams this out more than um, uh, Lee Clark's son that left us to go to Liverpool and is apparently on fire at the moment and looks to be playing pretty well. Um, I think he's going to be that that last little reminder of the of the Ashley era um, and the one that got away, so to speak. Uh, he, he looks he looks a good quality, um, and it's it's one of those things where. You know, probably much like Michael Carrick when we lost him uh, way back when, because Keegan did away with the reserves and he wasn't going to get that opportunity to play. He left as well. Mm. So you know, I think it's important to to see those young players coming through, as you said, to give that impetus and that sort of 
if if it's other like players the carrot. it's that carrot like for, it, for new yeah, players just, to say just if you come carrots. here you, you're going to get a chance you're not going to be stuck in the reserves yeah. until you rot away yeah. and your career's in the toilet so i think the the yeah getting those players coming through is great i think getting the likes of garen cole and and if we get these like you know andre santos or, or um maximo perone or whatever they, their names are that we're, we're looking for um I think it's important that at least a few of them actually make it through, start playing first team football for us, just just to give us that kickstart in terms of the reputation that's been so badly damaged by the Ashley era. Um, so yeah, look, I mean, Ray Vallecano at home, um, they they just beat or drew against Real Madrid, I believe, in the league over in Spain just mm-hmm. before the break. Um, they're sitting two points off a European spot in, in Spain in La Liga, so they're, they're not a bad side, and I thought we played them off the park. Um, it was a nice early kickoff for us, so I got to watch it last night um, live. Uh, look, Longstaff took his goal absolutely brilliantly. Um, Chris Wood scored an absolutely cracking penalty that Harry Kane needs to go and watch on repeat um, and learn how to take them. And then Target decided he would get in there on the action as well. Unfortunately, it was an own goal at his own end. Uh, <laughs> but look, I mean, we, we played them off the park. I think the press, the high press stuff that we play, the energy that we showed, it was, it was really impressive. I think we were missing, I mean, ASM played, he had some issues. I think their only option to deal with him seemed to be to foul him every time he got the ball. So, you know, it, the, the ref did, did okay. He, he didn't let anything go that that needed to needed to be stopped. So, look, um, I don't have a problem with the ref doing that. But, you know, it was obvious that Maxi was probably the big threat for us. Um, we didn't seem to have, have that extra edge up front. Um, and I think that comes down to that lack of depth. And, you know, when, you, when you're talking about we had Fabian Schaar out, we had... Um, uh, Big Dan Burnout, we had uh, Bruno, Joe Linton, Almiron, Isak Wilson. wasn't playing, Wilson. You know, we had so many of like what would normally be our first choice players out of that side, and we still put on a really good performance. Um, my take home from that, and I want your opinion on this, Dimmy, um, I have, have a chat about the game as well, but great to see the youngsters, great to see that we've got this sort of depth of players you know starting to come through but maybe just missing that little bit of extra quality that we want to address in january um and and obviously next summer as well but for me eddie howe is bigger than any player that we have or could bring in um i think the the immediate thing that i saw last night was we brought all these new players in the game plan itself the way we play the tempo that we play with, the skills that players are showing, the jobs that they're doing, it was great to see that that was just working. And it didn't matter who you were slotting into those roles. And we're, we're maybe missing that quality, but the overall game itself and the team plan seems to work. So for me, like everyone's saying, oh, well, we don't want to like lose a Paqueta to, to a West Ham or something like that again in, in January or the summer. You know, we, we need to go out and beat these clubs. It's like, for me, I don't care. If, if Eddie Howe wants a player and we get a player, Eddie Howe is the biggest catalyst for whoever we get in. And we start to build that quality up. But Eddie Howe is the one that's got us playing like that in the first place. Um, what, what What's your thoughts on that one? 100% agree, man. 100% agree. That that was one of the main takeaways that I had. I thought our intensity for, for a friendly was, was fairly good, especially with so many quality players out and, and like you said, even when the kids came on in the last 20, 25 minutes, they were doing exactly the same as what the starters or what our bench players would be doing. They were pressing. They were making themselves available. They weren't just hoofing the ball long. They were trying to play the right way. So definitely Eddie's, Eddie's system and the way he wants us to play is filtered down not only from the first 11 to the bench, but even to the academy where when these boys come on, even 16-year-old Lewis, he knows exactly what he needs, what he needs to do. So... That was definitely one of the main takeaways. I thought also John Joe looked quite sharp. I was just about um, to ask you that, hair, yeah. Yeah, obviously his haircut does look very sharp and shiny in, in the sun, so that was good. <laughs> but uh, he he looked quite sharp, and I thought his quarterback role was was very decent. Obviously, it's hard to hard to judge because the pace of the game wasn't wasn't at a Premier League level, but he did look quite sharp on the ball, which is which is always nice and. He is somebody that we have missed at times because there's going to be times where Bruno gets marked out of the game or he, he might have an off game. 
And in that midfield three, there's not another player who normally starts for us who can pick a pass like John Joe does. So he is important when he's when he's on form in, in song. So it was good to see him play. And I was also happy that Maxi got through 90 plus whatever minutes. I mean, he did get injured or he got something happened to him at the end where I don't know what was going on, but yeah. It was a clash of knees or, or who knows what it was, but the uh, the camera couldn't really pick up what was going on. But it's good to see he got 90 minutes. I think he, need, he needs it. And even when, when the team resumes against Bournemouth and, and Leicester, I'd be surprised if, if Eddie starts at Maxi. I think he's going to really make Maxi earn his spot. And, and this is just another sign that he's, he's making him play these friendly games where most of the big guns, let's say, were given the day off, but he was made to play 90 minutes plus three. So... I think Eddie's really sticking a rocket up him and, and hoping that he gets the best out of Maxi come come January. Yeah, I was I was impressed with uh, with Shelby in that role where he was just pinging balls left and right from where he was. There was like loads of one touch passes going on in the team in general, but Shelby just looked really sharp. Um, I was I was quite impressed, and it kind of leads on to that question of when you got everyone fit and as as good as Longstaff's been in in that midfield role. If you can play Shelby and allow Bruno and Joe Linton to kind of like push up a little bit more, um, and Shelby in that kind of more holding, as you said, quarterback role to kind of spray the ball around and, and start those things up, start those those attacks up. Um, Bruno can be a bit more fur, bit, bit further up the pitch. Hopefully, when he then does something, he's either got a bit more space he's got a bit more time he's got a bit more awareness of what's around him and he's in a more dangerous um threatening position on the pitch to to affect a goal or something like that so um it'll be interesting to see what happens with that um the last thing on the agenda for tonight um that i wanted to go through was was the obviously we're playing bournemouth in the cup game uh tuesday night um i believe it is so it'll be wednesday morning for us uh look the, the It'll be, as you said, we don't know what sort of team Bournemouth's going to come out with. Uh, it is it is a big opportunity for Newcastle to progress and the way all the other game, games uh, and the other teams are kind of like lining up against each other and we're getting a lot of Premier League teams bow out. You know, this is a huge opportunity for us to break that that trophy duck, really, or at least sort of get a long way in the competition. And, and you know, it, it's got to be it's got to be good to sort of be just just to be seen, I think, more than anything. And so just to show us that, you know, we've got this progress, look, come and join on board with us because we're starting to climb up the table. We're starting to get involved in all the cup competitions. You want to be involved in all of this. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of a Newcastle team, um, I, th- I think it's pretty safe to say that Isak's not going to play. Um, we've got a couple of other players that are coming back from the World Cup maybe a little bit too early for them, the Bournemouth game. Um, I'll start with you, Demi. Who do you see coming in? Who do you see going out? Um, and do you think we'll play a pretty much uh, a full strength side other than anyone who needs an extra rest? Or do you see it's actually, you know, going into this a little bit gently? I'm, I'm a bit with Keegan. I think we're going to go all out for this game. I think the fact that the game's been moved. 24 hours earlier as well is a is a real fill for us because our game against Leicester is not till next Monday night. So it's a full six-day break, which is more than enough time for for the star players, let's say, to recover. So I think we're going to go all out attack. I think probably by, by Isak, who probably won't make the squad, I think there's going to be a full squad to pick from and, and the best team that Eddie thinks at the time is going to be the best team will be picked. There won't be anyone rested, in my opinion, Bournemouth, like you said, they've probably got bigger fish to fry. They don't see themselves progressing further in the Carling or Carabao or whatever it's called these days, Cup. Coca-Cola. The Coca-Cola Cup or (laughs) God knows what they've called it this year. Um, So it's it's definitely a help for us that Bournemouth probably won't have their their strongest team. They'll probably be focused more on the Premier League game on the weekend. So... I think it's a massive opportunity for us to yeah to win to get into the quarterfinals get the keep the good vibes going and and as as Keegan said earlier I think you want to get off we've, we've had a six week break where some of these boys haven't played a lot at the World Cup your Trippiers your Brunos even Cher so you want to get them into a competitive fixture as soon as possible so by the Leicester game where where we really earn money in the Premier League they're they're right to go so. 
I'd be going full strength, all out attack, and hopefully uh, doing the number on Bournemouth. Yeah, I, I have to admit, I didn't realise that we actually had that much of a break between this game and, and the Leicester game. So that's a huge bonus for us. Um, so Keegan, I mean, if, if you start thinking about it, it's probably almost like it's this is the preseason game that the others have already had. Um, so you can bring Wilson mm. and, and Bruno and everyone back in if they're if they're back and they're fit and they're settled. I mean, I mean Bruno was at the game um, last night um, or yesterday uh, for the for the friendly he was he was in the in the stadium supporting the team and again i, I just love that about him that he him and trippier always seem to support the rest of the players no matter what um yeah. it's hugely huge leadership for them like both on and off the pitch for us um so that that was really good to see uh so yeah i mean if you if you look at this as kind of like that you know, let's just give them that game and they should have been training with England and Brazil and all that anyway. So it's not like they haven't been, you know, at least training. They haven't had those matches, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, what's your what's your sort of feeling in terms of who is going to be playing though? Um, because obviously we, we do have a few yeah. little decisions to Question make now marks. that we've actually yes. got some players coming back from injury that are ready to play as well, like Shelby, who wasn't in contention uh, pre-World Cup. Yeah. Um, just before that, I just want to cycle back to what you said about Eddie being the biggest biggest thing at the club. I know it's obviously really cold over in the UK now, but um, Eddie being the biggest thing at the club was under no doubt over in um, Saudi Arabia with his polo shirt on and his, his hulking arms and massive <laughs> I, was wait, I was waiting for this. Yeah. I was waiting for this. <laughs> like, yeah. So... He definitely is the biggest thing at the club. Like it's not even close, and it, no one's as as big as him. But Jack, that, that, he is jacked. He's. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not going to go. Yeah, he's. <laughs> so said save about that his, for tonight when you're alone, yeah, Keegan. We we said about his work ethic and stuff like that. Like it's he's renowned for getting there at six a.m. and sometimes not leaving to six p.m. and stuff like that. I, I reckon he does a two hour circuit before the players get in in the gym and then sort of starts his his work with the players and training and stuff like that. But anyway, I digress. Back to your point. I think oh, I've got a feeling that um, I don't think Bruno will play. I think he might come on for half an hour at the end to give him a run out because I think he was a bit like getting back. Not exactly sure with Wilson's status. I know a lot of the guys, I think I read somewhere on Twitter, a lot of the guys that didn't play yesterday had a, had a big session on uh, Friday. So yeah. depending on how – how that went for them and it's going to be horses for courses how guys are feeling and stuff like that but yeah i've got i've got a feeling wood wood will start um i think a midfield three of of joe um willock longstaff and shelby somewhere maybe um joe plays on the left miggy on the right something like that and Ed bruno's that sort of guy who can come on give him a run out i think um lascelles and uh burn probably hold down uh, the center backs and Trippier obviously played last night. So he, he should be right to play and target can play left back. So I think that's probably going to be somewhere close to what we're going to play. Wilson might see Wilson off the bench, same thing for the last half an hour, just to give him a run out and get his feet underneath him and give him a bit of game before the Leicester game as well. So I, I've, I think that's how it'll go, but yeah. We don't, we're not really. Yeah, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see the the final squad um, before it's uh, before before they run out because I'd I'd like to see Shelby back in there just just yeah I, I think he'll start I, 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 I'd hand be on very hard, surprised I think if he doesn't he he he'd start and yeah that's why I think Bruno getting back a bit later um, I'm not sure if they give him a little another week off or a few days off after their World Cup game like they did with the players when the Premier League yeah. stopped who they, they normally who, do yeah I know that yeah so yeah he might be that's what I say he might be a little bit. He might be a few days behind some of the other guys as well. So, um, yeah, yeah that, that, that's what sort of makes me lean towards him not not starting, but him coming off the bench for half an hour, 20 minutes, give him a bit of a run out and, and get his legs back under him. Because like you said, you can do all the training you like, but it's a lot different to, to that match play. And I'm not sure how hard they train at a World Cup. It seems to be more – it'd be more of a recovery – Get your yeah. body right because there wasn't a lot of time around. between each game either. So they, yeah, sure. yeah. So yeah, it's probably just re pure recovery yeah. time and and tactics yeah. and stuff, not not necessarily fitness training. Yeah. yeah. No, it's fair. Um. So yeah, I think that's that's probably wraps us up for tonight. Um. It's a 
try and keep it a relatively short one. I think you guys are knackered. I'm knackered. So a uh, nice early night for us all. Um, yes, I think before absolutely. we go, let's have some score tips. Uh, Dimmy, your score for the uh, Bournemouth game? 3 nil. I'm assuming to us. <laughs> yes, yes, clearly. Yes. <laughs> Keegan, what's your call? Uh, 4-1. Oh, wow, I think okay. Bournemouth will, Bournemouth will go, send a... We're going to go nuts. Yeah, I think we'll play a decent team. I don't think Bournemouth would send a, send a great team up. So I'll go for the blowout. I'm, I... I th- I'm going to go for a two nil. Um, I, I think we'll we'll put a strong side out. I'm not sure we'll play Wilson, and I don't think we're quite as potent an attack without Wilson up there. Um, uh, but then look, Miggy's probably back in, so he might uh, he might get his shooting boots on and grab his hat trick in the cup or something. So fingers <laughs> crossed. Right then, uh, we'll call it there. Um, thanks, guys. I uh, actually really enjoyed that tonight. Just a bit of a bit of a reminisce and a recap of the last couple of weeks worth of random nice sh- random shenanigans. Yeah. Yes. So it's, uh, looking forward to. Business as usual resuming with uh, with Newcastle being the main focus and all these random like pointless World Cup games out of the way. Um, so that's good. So thanks for everyone for watching and listening. Um, as I said uh, at the start, there um, hit us hit us up with a like and a subscribe. Um, you can catch us on YouTube. You can catch us on most of audio uh, platforms like Spotify and Apple podcasts so uh, we'll leave it there and we'll see you again next time thanks very much everyone uh, catch you later yep. guys don't forget your shirts don't forget your shirts <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> cheers see you later